There was a quote that I came across many years ago. I don't recall exactly when, but it's been very helpful in my growth, and I still try to apply it whenever possible. And this is a quote from Thomas Akempis who said, Seek to overcome that in yourself which most disturbs you in other people. Now, what does that mean exactly? Seek to overcome that in yourself which most disturbs you in other people. Well, this goes right along with another idea that was presented to me by another person probably around the same time. That other people are like mirrors who reflect back to us many of our own unconscious traits and tendencies. And what that means is that we have in us certain tendencies, emotions, beliefs, behaviors, attitudes, and so on that we aren't consciously aware of. And though they may be expressed in ways that are noticeable to other people, we can often be unaware of them ourselves. However, there's the tendency to easily spot these things in other people, to notice when other people are behaving in these ways to become fixated on those particular tendencies and to be very critical in that regard. It's always easier to find fault in others than to recognize the same fault in ourselves. And this is usually because of our own judgment in regard to these things. We may have come to see these things as unhealthy or unacceptable or even shameful. And so any existence of this in ourselves we tend to repress or deny, which simply means we blind ourselves to it. And the more harshly we judge these aspects, the more unwilling we are to acknowledge them in ourselves. It's often our own shame which prevents us from acknowledging them. So we avert our attention away from these things. And one way that we do this is by fixating on the faults in others. And when we spot these things in other people, we tend to feel deeply disturbed by it, irritated, agitated, bitter. And this isn't to say that every time we feel agitated, it means that we're projecting. But it is something which often accompanies projection. We may be agitated simply because we feel disrespected in some way or for some other reason altogether. But it may also be that we're agitated by our own unconscious shame in knowing that deep down we have the same tendency in us as well. Without realizing it, what we do sometimes is project our own vices, our own tendencies, our own attitudes or whatever it happens to be onto the other person along with whatever judgments that we have in regard to those things. And sometimes our projections can even be imaginary. That is, we might see things in others that aren't really there. We might simply misinterpret their behavior or their tone or the things they say because it's much easier to project these things outward and onto others, to criticize those things in others than it is to look within and to resolve them there. But unfortunately, this doesn't resolve them at all. If we have these tendencies in ourselves, all we're doing is avoiding the responsibility of resolving them. And I think for anyone who is serious at all about their own growth or awakening, we should have the willingness to really reflect deeply and honestly, to look at ourselves in this way, to at least consider that we might be doing this from time to time, and to have enough awareness to recognize it when we do. For me, whenever I find myself particularly bothered by some characteristic or behavior in others, whether it's in regard to a particular person or to people in general, I take some time to reflect and see if I might also be guilty of the same thing. And sometimes I find that I am. Not always, but sometimes. And it's not always in exactly the same way, but perhaps in some way I'm doing the same thing. And if I can acknowledge that and take the time to work on that in myself, I find that the more I'm able to resolve it, the less it tends to bother me. And to give an example, something I used to really find irritating was how judgmental some people could be. But as I began reflecting on that, I began to realize that I could be 
pretty judgmental myself. In fact, I had quite a bit of judgment just in regard to people who were judgmental, or at least if I perceived them to be. That is to say that perhaps not everyone I perceived as being judgmental actually was. Certainly there were some who were, but sometimes I may have been misinterpreting people's words or body language, or perhaps in some cases it was purely my own projection, a projection of my own self-judgment. And the more I can see that, to acknowledge that self-judgment and to work to resolve that in myself, I find that it doesn't bother me so much if other people are judgmental. They can think whatever they like. Why should I care? So once we begin to reflect on these things, we discover these things about ourselves, and when we're able to work to resolve them, we become less bothered by what other people say or do, which isn't to say that we excuse or ignore their behavior. If there's something that really needs to be addressed, we can actually address it better once we've taken the time to address our own issues. Something else that really used to irritate me was when people seemed to be disingenuous, when it seemed that they were putting on a pretense of some kind, not being authentic. And I would find myself often judging and criticizing this sort of thing as well. And I remember later on someone pointing out to me that I seemed irritable much of the time. And looking back, I would have used the word bitter. But that's what happens when you're constantly judging and criticizing people. It really turns you bitter, and it's a miserable way to live. And so I started reflecting on that, trying to see what might be behind that. And as I started to really look at it, why was I so critical of others, so judgmental? Especially in regard to being disingenuous. And again, could this be in any way a projection? Could this be something that I do as well? And when I got really honest with myself, I began to notice that there were in fact ways in which I was also being disingenuous. There were certain ways that I had been downplaying or hiding my faults, my flaws, my vices, my negative emotions, in an attempt to present myself in a way that was more as if I just didn't have those things, as if I was more evolved than that. And I wasn't necessarily exaggerating anything, but there was a kind of minimizing. It wasn't as if I was claiming to have transcended all of that. I just had to downplay it well enough that others might come to that conclusion all on their own. And if they did, I wasn't going to correct that false impression. Now, I don't know if I was really fooling anyone. It's quite possible that other people could sense that I wasn't being upfront and transparent. It's quite possible that some people saw right through it. Whether or not I was successful at hiding these things from others, there were certainly some things which I had been successful at hiding from myself, or at least rationalizing in some way that seemed to excuse or to minimize them. At the very least, I could distract myself from those things by looking for flaws to focus on in others, to give my attention to that instead. But as I turned my attention on to myself, I found that I had my own way of being disingenuous or inauthentic or what have you. And I started exploring that, trying to see why that was, why I felt the need to hide these things, which I found so unacceptable, and why I found them unacceptable, and whether or not I could come to accept them. And one of the things that I came to find was that in my attempt to distract from my own negative tendencies, I would focus my attention on the negative tendencies in others. I would look for things to criticize in order to feel better about myself. And another thing that really bothered me was when people acted as if they were better than others, superior, with a kind of arrogance. And I remember at one point thinking to myself, I'm better than that. 
which is to say that I'm better than those who think that they're better than others. And all of a sudden I realized I was doing the same thing. I was looking down on people who think that they're superior to others. And in that looking down, I was raising myself up in order to feel superior to them. And as I started looking at this more closely, I began to realize that there were a number of other ways in which I felt superior to others, in which I was judging and criticizing in order to boost my own ego, how I had my own sort of arrogance and that sort of thing. And I didn't like what I saw. I had an ugliness about it, and it didn't feel good either. Whenever I was coming from that place of arrogance or judgment or superiority, there was a bitterness about it. It wasn't a comforting feeling. It was actually quite unsettling. So I started looking at it, looking more deeply into it, and what I discovered was that I was really very insecure. I wanted to think that I was better than others, but that was only because in many ways I actually felt inferior or inadequate. And of course, the more I addressed that in myself, becoming more and more secure in myself, I found that the impulse to judge and criticize others diminished. In fact, the more I was able to approach all of that with more understanding and compassion, the more understanding and compassion I had for others in place of all that judgment. So it's an interesting thing how that works sometimes. We really have to pay close attention to recognize these things in ourselves. And it can sometimes take quite a bit of self-reflection before we really begin to see it, before it becomes clear to us. But as we go into it more deeply, as we resolve those things in ourselves, the tendency to project and to judge and so on, all of that starts to drop away. Now, in regard to projection, something else that I came to notice was that sometimes my projections or my assumptions of others were quite inaccurate. If I perceived people as being disingenuous or pretentious, judgmental or arrogant or egotistical or whatever it happened to be, sometimes those observations were indeed accurate, but sometimes they were completely mistaken. As I began reflecting more on myself and resolving those things in myself which I found so disturbing in others, it became clear to me that some people who I had perceived as having that sense of superiority, for example, were actually quite humble. Some who I had perceived as being arrogant were really genuinely wise. And some of the people who I saw as putting on a pretense, for example, the pretense of being very blissful, were actually genuinely happy people. And so again, this is what I mean when I say that sometimes we project onto others things that aren't really there, and that we can misinterpret their behavior or make unfounded presumptions about them. And what I found in looking more deeply at this in myself was that I was actually envious of these people. I was envious of their happiness. I was envious of the respect that they received from others. I was envious of the way that some of them lived. And so my compulsion to make presumptions about certain people and then to criticize them based on those presumptions was sometimes just coming from envy because I wanted what they seemed to have. I wanted to be happy. I wanted to be respected and so on. I wanted to live the kind of life that they were living. And I suppose I felt that it was unfair that they should enjoy those things while I have to suffer with my lot in life. And in as far as wanting to have the respect of others, this seemed to be one of the reasons behind my own pretense. That is, I was hiding my flaws in order to gain the acceptance of others because I had not yet come to accept myself. I had felt inadequate in many ways, insecure. I had a lot of shame and self-judgment. 
and being concerned that others might also judge me in the same way, I had that tendency to hide those things which I felt shameful of. And so the judgments which I had in regard to others were, for the most part, a projection of my own self-judgment, my own sense of shame because what I often judged about them were those very things which I had not yet fully acknowledged and accepted in myself. And as I said, sometimes what I saw in them was not necessarily there. Sometimes it just appeared to be. It was just my own projection. But it's much easier to project these things onto others and then to criticize them than to acknowledge these things in oneself and to take the responsibility to resolve them. But even in regard to those where my perception was correct in that they were indeed putting on a pretense of some sort or behaving with a kind of arrogance or egotism or what have you, once I began resolving these things in myself, it didn't bother me so much. I didn't really care so much if others behaved that way so long as they weren't harming anyone. For some people, that's just their game, and they'll get tired of playing it eventually. Sometimes you just have to walk away and leave them to work it out for themselves, and to keep bringing your attention back to your own bullshit, because that's the only thing you really have any power to transform. And we all have our bullshit. If you think you don't have any bullshit, that's probably your bullshit right there. And I think we spend too much time concerned about what others are doing and not enough time reflecting on ourselves and resolving our own bullshit. And this takes a certain degree of self-acceptance, a certain degree of loving-kindness, not to be so hard on ourselves, but to be forgiving, to be understanding, to be patient, to understand that none of us are perfect. We all have our shit. And the sooner that we recognize it, the sooner we can begin resolving it. And it's often an ongoing process. It can sometimes be a long, gradual, lifelong process, which requires a bit of vigilance, just to be more aware of oneself, more attentive, and noticing whenever these sorts of things show up, and then taking the time to reflect on them. And for me, I'm always uncovering all sorts of things in myself. There's always some area in need of addressing. There's always something more to discover, something more to learn, something to let go of, something else to resolve, and so on. And that's a wonderful thing. If you can appreciate that, if you can just be curious about it, it can be a really fascinating journey of growth and discovery. One of the things that I've learned to do is simply take notice of whenever I feel disturbed by something that I observe in other people. If I'm feeling irritated or agitated, and especially if we find ourselves judging and criticizing, that's really the thing to be watchful of. It's usually an indication that we're projecting. Not always, but often. And then to inquire as to whether or not it might be a reflection of something which is unconscious in us. To have the willingness to really look closely and honestly at ourselves. And you know, in some cases, it might not be that we're projecting. We may simply be observing. But let's not make that assumption. Let's look first and see, because we can be really skilled at deceiving ourselves. So this is why it's important to take time to reflect upon ourselves in this way, to look very deeply at ourselves, to ask, what is it the other might be reflecting back to me? What is it that I perceive in them that I might be blind to in myself? Could it be that what I find so disturbing in them is something which I have come to deny within myself? And do I have the willingness to explore that? At the very least, to consider the possibility. Because if these things exist in us, that's the only way it's ever going to get resolved, is if we can bring our awareness to it. 